if any one of you think there's any issue or you want to look back at it, you can always go to I'll set I can send you guys or uh, in uh, those who needed it. I'll send to you a link uh, in YouTube to go and watch the uh, the recorded uh, version. Again, it's gonna be hard to send via email on video, so you can go and have a look in the uploaded version on YouTube. Okay, would that be good? Can, huh? All right. Okay, let's start with today's tutorial question. Let's see, what is it about? All right. So the first question here, the first question here we're gonna talk about here is, uh, the financial management decision process. So they ask you, what are the three types of financial management decisions? And each decision give an example of a business transaction that would be relevant. Okay, three types of financial management decision. So remember this. Okay, remember this. The three things that you need to remember is these three. Investment decisions, financing decisions, and working capital management. This is the three investment decisions that we need to know, okay? So very simple, investment decision also known as capital budgeting, all right? So this is to decide on what is the uh, investment we're gonna do in the company. You want to invest your money into which sites? Are you gonna expand your business? Are you gonna put it into research and development? Are you gonna talk about uh, merger and acquisitions? Again, okay. uh, are you gonna do uh, buying more assets or more properties or whatsoever? So this is investment decision of a company. It's also known as capital budgeting. Okay. The second investment decisions here. The second decisions here is financing decisions. How are you gonna get the money to support your business running? Okay. This is also known as capital structure. All right. So there are two ways to finance your, com uh, your companies or your corporation. It's either via debt or equity. So if you're using debt, means you are taking loans. Okay? We are taking money from other people. All right? We are borrowing from people. Okay? All right. So that is debt. Equity, equity means you're getting new investors. People invest capital into you, they become a shareholder. So there's two different uh, capital structure here, or we call it financing decision. Again, there's two way to get, uh, to generate uh, finance or generate uh, capital for a company. One is debt, one is equity. That means you borrow money from someone, okay? You know, pay interest. Whereas equity means you attract investor. Someone come into the bandwagon with you. They join into your corporation. They are part of you and they become a shareholder. All right. This is a difference. Huh? I hope that it uh, clears. Huh? I hope you guys uh, know what I'm talking about. Okay. So the last one is working capital management. So working capital management is the simplest among these three, which is the inflow and outflow of income. Okay. Talking about spending money and earning money. That's all. Okay, so three goals of financial management, invest, uh, uh, sorry, three uh, investment decisions, okay? Three types of financial management decisions here. Investment decisions, financing decisions, and working capital management. All right, Ken. Anyone having any issues so far? Hmm? Anyone? No, no issues, huh? Inflows mean getting money. Yes, money coming in. Inflow of money into the company. Outflow means money going out. What is R&D? Research and development. Okay, R&D means research and development. So each company, especially manufacturing plants or technology company, they have an R&D department, which is investment into research and development. Okay, are they gonna make it better? For example, like iPhones, every year, there's a new upgrade on new iOS going coming up. So they have an R&D department to do that. Okay, 
So companies in tech, they'll invest a certain amount of money into R&D to make the products better. So that's an investment to them. Okay? Okay, clear? All right, very good. So if any issues, please send me in the chat if you are shying to talk to me, okay? So, yep, I think this, this, form, uh, this format will be easier to see. Okay, so moving on. The second question here asking you about goal of financial management, okay? What goal should always motivate the actions of the firm's financial manager? So remember, this is a very standard and very uh, typical answer to this question. What goal should always motivate the actions of the firm's financial manager? What is the motivation to a firm's financial manager? Okay, the answer to this is very straightforward. It's very simple. You need to understand this. A firm's financial manager's job Okay, or role or responsibility is to maximize shareholders' wealth. All right, how are they going to maximize the shareholders' wealth by increasing the share price? All right, so who are these shareholders? Shareholders are the one that uh, provide the financial uh, capital structure to you just now when we're talking about financing decisions. Okay, if they are, uh, if you are asking for equity, uh, this is where the shareholders come from. They inject the capital into your company and become a part of your company. So your job as a financial manager in a firm is to maximize their wealth, to give them uh, the best possible uh, returns in, in, uh, in dividend and in share price. Okay, so to increase their wealth is by increasing share price. Okay, so it's very straightforward. Remember these three words. Okay, maximize shareholders' wealth. Yeah, these three words are very important. So what is the goal or what is the motivation or what's the responsibility of a firm's financial manager? It's always to maximize shareholders' wealth, irregardless where you are or whichever firm you are in. Your job is to maximize your shareholders' wealth, to make them richer. And how to make them richer is by increasing the share price. Okay, very easy, very straightforward. So remember this, huh? So wherever you see goals, motivations, responsibility of your financial manager, maximize shareholders' wealth. No need to think. Straight away, plot it there. Okay? All right. Question three. This question is a bit uh, challenging because there are a lot of, uh, lot of uh, sub-questions to it. So first of all, you need to know what is an agency problem first. Okay? So agency problems. This whole question is going to talk about agency problems. The first question they ask you, who owns a corporation? Okay. Then they ask you to describe the process whereby the owners control the firm's management. Next, what is the main reason that an agency relationship exists in the corporate form of organization? In this context, what kind of problems can arise? So let's see the question into a broken part. Let's break it down into smaller parts. So the first one they ask you, who owns a corporation? So very simple. Who owns a corporation is those who are shareholders. Those who are having the equities. Okay? Equities mean the share of a company. Yeah? All right. So a company is a full pie when it's broken down into smaller pie and then you'll be owned by different shareholders. So all these shareholders are the owners of a corporation. So it's not the CEO. It's not necessarily the CEO. Huh? Again, CEO might be an external party being hired back. All right. Okay. Usually, the shareholders are the board of directors, the BOD, the board of directors. Okay. Generalizing it. Huh? All right. So keep this in mind. Who owns the corporation? Shareholders. Not the CEO, huh? not the CFO, but shareholders. Second question, describe the process whereby the owners controls the firm's management. Okay, so what is the process whereby the owner controls the firm's management? So in this case, the shareholder will elect directors, okay, or even CEOs or CFO or whoever to run the management. Okay, so not necessarily all directors are 
are shareholder. Some of them are being elected also. Okay? So the key point here, you just need to remember the owner of the corporation is shareholders. But the rest of the position hold in the company, it might be shareholder, it might not be shareholders too. So it's up to, uh, it depends. It depends on situations. Okay? So the following question here, what is the main reason that an agency relationship exists in the corporate form of organization? The main reason happen is because of separation of ownership from control in the firm. So what does it mean here? So this is the explanation for agency problem. Huh? So let me tell you huh, what is the agency problem here. Agency problem is actually the conflict of interest between the management group and the owners. Okay, so in this, uh, in this third question here, they ask you what is the main reason that an agency relationship exists in the corporate form? This will happen, okay, or agency problem will happen when there's a separation of ownership from the control in the firm. That means the shareholder elected a group of people to run the management of the company and they did not run it themselves. This will cause agency problem. Okay? So, let me clarify it again. What is agency problem? Agency problem is the different goals or settings set by two different entities. Shareholder will have a different goal. And of course, the uh, hired back directors and CEOs will have a different goals. So, everyone try to benefit, uh, try to gain a benefit from it. Makes sense, huh? Humans are selfish. Okay? Uh, everyone are very selfish when they see money or when they see there's a monetary return. Alright? Take an example. Imagine you guys are owner of a company. Okay? And you are so high and mighty and are so busy, you do not want to run your own company anymore. You want to be sitting at home, having a nice chill uh, martini or whatsoever and let your staff do the work for you, okay? In that sense, you as the owner, what do you want? You wanted to have a uh, high return, right? You want to have high dividend. Am I right? Guys, come, give me some reaction. Yes. Hmm, okay, as owners, you want to have high response, or high, uh, sorry, high returns and high profit without you working your ass off, okay? So in that case, you hire a group of CEOs and uh, whatsoever directors to run the company for you because you are resting at home and chilling there and you want to have a maximized profit. So that's your goal. But on the other hand, when your CEO is running the show, he or she wanted to have uh, a growth in the company instead. Instead of giving all the dividends back to you, they are planning on the future of the company to sustain themselves to build a name for themselves, okay? If you realize, if you realize uh, in most of the organization, uh, you see, whichever CEO, how, what is the success rate, uh, what is the successful uh, things that done by CEO is very well recognized in the business world. What Tony Fernandez did, what did uh, uh, John, uh, what did, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, what is that, Jack Ma, what did Jack Ma did as a CEO? what this Steve Jobs did as a CEO, okay? So, you see, all these uh, CEO's uh, contribution to the company are being well valued. So, CEO want to do something to mark his name or to label his name in somewhere in the business world. So, they have a different target. They are talking about uh, business development. They're talking about the uh, growth. They're talking about R&D. Whereas you as the owner at home, you don't care what you only want to earn money. Why not? I now go, I earn more money. The better, uh, the more the better. I want it cash coming into my account. So in this case, there's already two different goals. One wanted to build their own name. Another one wanted to profit. So when there's two different goals here, it will cause agency problem. Okay, it will cause agency problem. That what it means by agency uh, problems here. Okay, are you guys clear with the explanation? Is it too fast? Or am I speaking uh, too much of um, uh, I think it's a bit too fast. Uh, so to get things uh, shared, so agency problem is the conflict of the difference in, in interest goals from two entities, is it correct? Yep. That's what I'm catching. Okay. Okay, 
So a bit too fast, then you let me tell, tell me which part you miss out, then I can repeat it for you. All right. So in this case, let me uh, slow down it back to you or recap for you. When an agency problem arises, it's between conflict of two different groups, the owners and also the staff that they hired back, the managers, okay, in short, or the CEOs or the VCs that they hire back. So the group of staff that they hire back, they, are, they wanted to create a name for themselves because the company profiting, they don't get anything out of it. What they're expecting is they want to build a name for themselves. Okay? Whereas as owners, uh, you wanted to maximize your profit. So in this case, one wanted to build name, another one wanted to profit. Uh, so of course, when you wanted to build uh, when you wanted to build name, you don't want to do any uh, unethical stuff because it might tarnish your reputations. So in this case, there is also another conflict. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of conflict can happen between two different parties between the owners and the management team. So that is agency problem, okay? It could be a lot of things, huh? so don't be rigid that about, uh, just about the maximizing shareholders wealth or maximizing wealth. There are a lot of things that can happen, unethical, huh? about child labor. So all these things were actually reflected on the uh, CEOs or the management team's uh, image. Whereas the owner don't care. The owners want to maximize their earning. So all these things are the cause of the agency problems. And agency problems are considered as the conflict of interest between two parties. Simple. Clear? I think I repeat a lot of times already and it's uh, very rapid. It's, it's clear, sir. Yeah, it's clear. Clear. All right. Please stop me if you think that you have issues, okay? Don't be shy, although this is first class, all right? Okay, coming to the last part of the question, in this context, what kind of problem can arise? Okay, so I've already discussed it just now. Management interest does not align to shareholder goals. Okay, that means two parties having two different goals. All right? Okay, so could that you guys are still with me and do not. Okay, moving on. So the next question, this is a very simple one. The next question here is talking about primary and the secondary market. Okay. You have probably, uh, probably, probably noticed coverage in the financial press of an initial public offering of a company's securities. So web search company Google is a relatively recent example. I don't consider it a recent, it's already a long time ago. So web search company Google is an example here. So it's an IPO, a primary market transaction or secondary market transaction. So this question is very simple. You just need to identify or you need to know what is primary and what is secondary market. Okay, so make your life easy. Primary market, again, okay, usually are initial public offerings, IPOs we call it. Okay, and these IPOs are directly issued from a firm, right? Whereas for secondary market, it's purchased not directly from the issuing firm. So let me give you an example. So IPO here, or primary market, uh, primary market, IPO is primary market. So primary market here means I'm, okay, now I'm a company, all right? Rafti Corporations, Rafti is a company now. I need money, okay? So I release shares into the public, which is called IPO, all right? So people who buy these shares that I release are my new shareholder. They are buying a portion of my equities, okay? So you guys now, imagine, uh, I'm the owner of RFD Co, and you guys are interested investors. So today, I issued out or I released a list a uh, uh, number of uh, shares to you guys and you buy directly from me, okay? You are buying the IPO from me directly. So this is considered as a primary market. You buy directly from me, okay? So for example, just now, taking the same example just now, I RFT already sold my IPO to uh, let's say who? ID, okay? I already sold my shares to ID now. So ID are holding my shares now, okay? But then ID thinks that 
after buying my shares, he thinks that, ah, okay, now his shares has already gone up, huh? already make some money. So I don't want to hold this share anymore. I think most likely going to fall. So now I want to sell away all these Rafti's coal shares away. And he sold it to Abdul. So Abdul bought it from ID. That is secondary market. Okay. Abdul bought from ID. That is secondary market. That means you are buying from the market. You're buying from outside. Nothing to do with me anymore. You're buying directly from me, the company. Uh, that, that's IPO. If you're buying from outside, the exchange going on outside there, uh, in between third party, that is already a secondary market. Okay? So I hope that gives you a good example, a good uh, imagination that you can relate to the primary and secondary market. So this question they're asking you, is an IPO a primary market transaction or secondary market transaction? So there's no rocket science here. Always, whenever you see IPO, means it's going to be a primary market transaction. Okay, because it's an initial public offering. All right, it's issued by the firm directly. So you see, IPO is directly primary. Okay, sir. Uh, stock exchange is secondary market. Pardon? Uh, stock exchange where you ah, buy yes. the shares is yes. a secondary market. That is secondary market. The one that happening in BSKL, New York Stock Exchange, all those are secondary market. That means you're not buying from the company directly anymore. You're changing hands. You're looking at the supply and demand. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good example will be your stock market. Your stock market is a secondary market. Okay, so a primary market means you buy from the company directly. So I don't know how many of you are exposed to cryptocurrencies. So if you see cryptocurrency, also they have the same things, ICO, initial uh, crypto offering. Okay. So the ICO means uh, they haven't listed in the board yet, in the crypto board yet, in none of the uh, platform yet. So once in the platform, that one is already a secondary market. Okay, so uh, if you know, if you guys know about cryptocurrency, uh, those who go and mine the cryptocurrency, uh, that is the primary market. But after you mine, and then you want to exchange it into cash, you sell it to someone else, that is secondary market. Okay. So those who know about cryptocurrency, then yeah, you can take this as a good example. But those who are not uh, sure what is cryptocurrency, then forget about it. Nah? Don't confuse yourself. Just use stock exchange. All right. Clear, huh? Can, huh? Are you cool or yeah. not cool? Yeah. Still with me? Very cool, sir. All right. Hopefully, that uh, will last until the 19th of February. Okay? All right. So moving on, the question number five here. Uh, this is a very uh, debatable question. Okay, why I say it's debatable? Because this question got no right or wrong. All right, even in the exam, there's no right or wrong if it came out. Okay, what happened here? Let's look at this. So ethics and firm goals. So can our goal of maximizing the value of the stocks conflict with other goals, such as avoiding unethical or illegal behavior? In particular, do you think subjects such as customers and employee safety, the envi environment and the general good of society fit in this framework? Or are they essentially ignored? Try to think of some specific scenario to illustrate your answers. Okay, so this question is asking you, can goal of maximizing the value of the stocks conflict with other goals, such as avoiding unethical or illegal behavior? Okay, uh, so, it depends on students to debate on this question. There's two extreme end. Okay? There's two extreme end. Like what I tell you just now. Okay? What I tell you just now, you as an owner, you don't care what your staff going to do or what is the uh, management team going to do. Your job is you want them to maximize the profit. So, to a certain extent, you don't, you don't mind if they are being unethical because uh, you're not involved. Okay? You can just push, it, push all the responsibility to them. Oh, oh, yes, uh, my company actually did something bad like that. Oh, they exploit the uh, child labor, really? I uh, didn't know that. My management team asked my CEO. Because what you want is, you want to pocket the money. Okay? You want to pocket the money. Alright, so you don't care. Whatever management do, you blame the management. So, the problem here, uh, agency problem here, will relate to this strongly also. So the management team might not want to spoil their reputation when they are ruling or, uh, or controlling that particular company. They wouldn't want to do such thing 
to spoil their image as the management team. All right. So you see, there's two extreme sides to here. All right. Okay. So think of this thing. Uh, okay. This is not the answer, but think of this relevantly. Uh, you think, let me ask you. All right. A lot of us were complaining. Okay. Nike are uh, uh, exploiting child's labor. Uh, Foxconn are using child labor and exploiting working hours. So let me ask you one simple question and you ponder about it. Okay. So all these child labor in uh, third world country or in poor country or in poverty, they go to work to earn a living or to get uh, to earn some uh, to earn a, to earn some money for food. Okay, if let's say if let's say your company don't hire any of these child to work. Will they naturally end up in school or not? Hmm? Come on, think together. So Maybe. if you, yeah, okay. Come, pardon. Uh, I I said maybe. <laughs> they were, you say maybe they will end up in school, right? Maybe, right? It's not hundred percent, right? But the uh, the idea here, we are assuming that if we don't hire them to work, they will naturally go to school. And your answer just now is maybe, okay? The likelihood of them not ending up in, the, in school is almost 100%. Why? Because they can't even, uh, they're hungry. They can't even get food. So do you think they bother about education? Do you think they bother about going to school or not? Their first, their no. first world problem to them that, uh, at that moment is food. So without food, do you still have the uh, thoughts of going to school? Uh, no, no, sir. Mm -hmm. You see, this is the very, very great dilemma here. All right. So some of this company, they debated if we don't hire them, they wouldn't have any money. So they won't even focus to go to school anymore. And in the end, they'll be delinquent and they'll be uh, robbing someone or they'll be doing something bad just for food. But if we hire them, they are having a stable income. They can uh, make a living out of it and they can survive. Okay. Uh, this, is the, this is the dilemma that people will always say is about ethics here. If you don't hire them, they got no food. They will rob the company. If we hire them, we are unethical. We are exploiting them. Ah, this is the things that you want to ponder about. So this kind of question, you always try to debate it. It could be any side. You could be at one extreme and you could be at the other extreme. Okay? All right. Okay, so you see, first of all, at one extreme, you could argue that in a market economy, all of, this, all of these things are priced. That means everything are having a price. All right? So that means everything, there's a price to it. So whether it's going to be uh, customer safety, going to be uh, employee safety, environment, uh, or ethical or not, there's a price to it. All right. This is uh, the one that the, the group of people that I uh, don't care. It, or in the mentality of, if I don't hire them, they're still going to rob the company after that. So my say I give them a job, they can get food for themselves. Uh, this is the extreme side that we're talking about. Okay. So the other extreme, they will push the uh, responsibility to government or to political process. Okay, they will want to push to the uh, to the legals or to the uh, to the what do you call that to the to those certain organization to implement a law to protect this group of people instead. Okay, because when a company are having an obligation to follow a statutory laws. Then they will not, uh, they will not, uh, what do you call that? They will not do such unethical stuff anymore because they are afraid of lawsuits. But if there's no law to cover this, uh, then company are in a 50 50 kind of uh, thinking. They wouldn't know. Okay, if I do this, it's going to be the same thing. If I do that, they're going to be the same, same effect also. So, my as well, I just exploit them. No difference. One. So, this is the ethics and firm goals effect. This is one of the issues that a lot of firms are facing. Should we do corporate social responsibility to help these people and suffer a loss to our profit? 
or should we do the ethical way to earn more money? Okay, I'll keep, take another example here. Imagine if you having a company now, okay, you having a company now, don't talk about child labor, talk about the employees, employee safety. You keep it at the minimum. Okay, yeah, it might not comply with the law, okay, but you keep it to the minimum. You're in the gray area now. So your yearly profit is $30 million. Okay, but if you were to comply with the uh, higher standard of employee safety regulations, that means you do everything in the tip top, you give highest medical care and whatsoever, mm, your monthly profit is only $2 million. So will you opt for $30 million or $2 million? You choose. Uh, in this kind of scenario, you choose. Do I want to earn $30 million or I want to talk about welfare and stuff like that? I only earn $2 million per month. Ah, this is this is a very good uh, example for you to think of. And this is the dilemma that a lot of companies are, think, are having. Okay? If you invest into it, we only earn $2 million. If you don't invest, you only earn, uh, we are earning $30 million. And if let's say, worst case scenario, we got uh, a lawsuit, we don't even need to lose so much of money. Because the $30 million can cover it easily. That is why a lot of firms, uh, they don't bother. Got it? Uh? Can you guys get it? Hmm. IB. A lot of IB yes. students here. Yeah. You should know all these things on international business. Hmm? Okay. So, no issues. Huh? Anyone having issues? Please let me know in the chat or stop me. Okay, no response. Yes, no. Hello. All right, no issues. Very good. Okay, it seems like you guys are well prepared. Okay, moving on. Question six. This is a very similar question to question number, I think number two. All right, international firm goals. So would our goal of maximizing the value of the stock be different if you are talking about financial management in foreign country? Why or why not? So this question is asking you, if you are a financial manager in an international company or in a foreign country, will you have a different goal or not? What is the goal we are talking about just now? What is the motivation or the goal of a financial manager? The three words. Can you remember? Uh, manager? Shareholders wealth. Pardon? Maximize shareholders' wealth. Exactly. Maximize shareholders' wealth. So that's, well, okay. So in this question, they're asking you, will this goal of maximizing shareholders' wealth be different or not if you are a financial manager in a foreign country? No, it would be the same. Yeah, it would be the same. Okay. It regardless wherever you are, when, whenever you are or whatever you are, when you are a financial manager, your goal is the same wherever you are. Your goal is to maximize shareholder wealth, regardless of which country you are in. All right, okay? But the problem is, it will be different in different country. Okay, they ask you why or why not? So the difference here is because you will be affected by different social, political, and economic climates. So remember these three things. Yeah, right now, I didn't write down, okay? So I did not write the answer for question six. So the goal will be the same for all uh, financial manager, wherever they are, which is to maximize shareholders wealth. Okay, all right. Then they ask you, would it be different if you think, uh, then they ask you why, uh, why or why not? So the goal is the same, but the problem is they need to make adjustment. Okay, so IB students, I think you guys are very clear about this. When you go to different country, they have different culture, different social, different political uh, environment, and different economic environment. So in this case, when you want to maximize the shareholders' wealth in a different country, you need to adapt to this. The social, the political, and the economic. The three things. Social, political, and economic. Mm. So you maximize according to these three changes in a different country. You okay? Fair enough? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Again, we come to agency problems. This is the last question of today. Again, we go to agency problem. 
but this question it's a very lengthy one so go through it with me slowly you can see on the slides that i show you is being highlighted in two different colors okay red color and blue color so look at it slowly first huh? so follow me closely and understand what is trying to what what it is trying to tell you i'll break it down to you later so a corporate ownership varies around the world historically individuals have owned the majority of shares in public corporations in the united states in germany and japan however banks or other large financial institutions and other companies own most of the stock in public corporations so do you think agency problems are likely to be more or less severe in germany and japan than in the united states and why okay so that's the first half of the questions next half in recent years the last large financial institution such as mutual funds and pension funds have been becoming the dominant owners of stocks in the united states and these institutions are becoming more active in corporate affairs what are the implica implications of this trend for agency problems and corporate control so break it down to look at the first half first the first half is telling you in the past again okay, in the past in us all right individuals are the one that owning the majority of shares but in germany and japan banks and large financial institutions are the owner of public corporations public corporations means here is public listed company okay so they ask you do you think that agency problem are higher in germany and japan or higher in united states and why so which one is higher all right so let's look at it <laughs> mm, don't use this stuff no good Oops, why didn't let me to draw? Go on now, uh, let me see what's the problem here. Yeah, they don't let me draw. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so look at here. They're telling you just now two issues here. Okay, one Germany and japan versus the us so two of these are fighting here we are talking about these two okay so in germany and japan what happened banks financial institutions and uh, large companies will be the owners of public corporation Whereas in the US is owned individually. So that's key. <laughs> Excuse me. So in this scenario here, <clears throat> which one will have a larger agency problem? Uh, hmm? Germany and Japan. Germany and Japan. Why? <laughs> uh, there are many uh, owners and they'll all have uh, different uh, interests. Okay, so this thing, uh, uh, this question is a bit confusing. So it's good that you understand the agency problem issues. But in this question here, it's uh, the reverse of it. So US are owned by individual. So individual means they have their own goals. 
means they have own goals. But they are owning what? They are owning public corporations. Public corporations means what? Uh, like public transports, huh? like the, uh, like in Malaysia, you're talking about public uh, utilities. Okay, water, electricity, public transportation, and so on and so forth. If, imagine, individuals are owning this public corporation, means they, are wanted, they wanted to maximize profit and they don't care about the public anymore. Am I right? Make sense or not? Yes. Yep. Makes okay. Sense. All right. So individuals, like I tell you, just now you are bosses that chilling at home. You don't care. You only want profit. You only want money coming into your pocket. So you won't think about the, uh, you're owning public corporations. What you care is you wanted more profit coming back to you. You will forgot about the welfare. But if it's owned by banks, financial institutions, and large companies, they will think about the welfare of the community. Why? Because banks, financial institutions, and large companies serve the communities. Am I right? Correct or not? Ah, you see, agency problem will be less severe in Germany and Japan compared to US in the past. Because US are owned by individuals. Okay? Although individual, you can say that for the company, you will have less agency problem, but the problem is it will cause us an issue to the public. And that is also another agency problem here. Okay? So it will cause us uh, a very bad agency problem to the community. Whereas in Germany and Japan, they are being controlled by bigger organizations like banks, financial institutions, and large companies. All, all these three being listed here are depending on the community to survive. So in that case, they'll care about the welfare of the community. So if they are in the public corporations, they are the owner of the public corporations, they will be more toned down to the uh, Taking the community, uh, taking the community as a priority, so agency problem will be lesser. They will have less uh, personal goals. There will be more general, uh, generalized or or more general goal oriented. Okay, this is the difference here. You can see. Does it make sense to you now? Yes. Mm, you see, uh, just now the previous question is simple. You're talking about in the company, it's between uh, owners and the management team. But when you talk about in the country, uh, it's a different story. Okay? You may talk about in the country, it's a different story here. You talk about public corporations here, it means uh, a public listed company. Okay, there's a high chance of it going to be public uh, transportations. It could be utilities, uh, your water bill, your electricity, and so on and so forth. If all these are being individually owned, the agency problem will be very high. Okay? But if it's owned by big uh, corporations like banks, financial institutions, and companies, uh, then it will be less agency problem because they think about the community. All of them have the same goal, to serve the community. Okay? All right. So back to this, back to the question just now. Back to the question just now. They tell us the second part, uh, okay? In recent years, large financial institutions such as mutual funds and pension funds have been becoming the dominant owner of stocks. So they're telling you now in US, okay, last time US is owned individually. Now no more. Did. Now is mutual funds and pension funds. So, mutual funds, uh, I don't know how many of you know whether, what is it. Mutual funds are actually uh, safe funds. Like unit trust, all right, uh, uh, bonds and so on and so forth. It's a group of funds being uh, categorized together to consider as uh, safe funds, low risk funds. Okay? Pension funds is definitely very low risk because it is to secure the country, uh, the country uh, retirement funds. So they could not screw up the things. 
So if they make a huge, in, uh, huge high risk investment, you will screw up the whole funds and then people will not have any uh, retirement funds anymore. So mutual funds and pension funds are low risk funds. So these, is, uh, these are the institutions that are controlling the, the what do you call that, the public, uh, the public, uh, what do you call that, the public corporations in US recently. <laughs> All right. And they are more active in corporate affairs. So what are the implications of these trends for agency problem and corporate control? So they're asking you, does this improve the agency, uh, the agency problem issues and corporate control or not? So the answer to this is very simple. So in present, just look at here, in present, US is con uh, public corporations is owned by pension and mutual funds, which is low risk funds. So when low risk fund means they won't do any uh, ridiculous uh, goals uh, or ridiculous uh, amb ambitious uh, movement. So they are very safe. So in this case, the agency problem for US has, will go down. The agency problem will go down. It become less agency problem, less conflict. Because you see, you're talking about uh, pension and mutual funds, right? retirement funds. So they are talking, of, they are holding the people's retirement money. So they could not mess it up. So in that case, they will not have any uh, personal goals or any ambitious goals. They wanted it to be safe. And then it, in that case, agency problem will go down. Because community is the priority. All right. When agency problem goes down, corporate control is strong. Okay? Corporate control is strong. Simple. Hmm, it will be more efficient. Can, huh? Clear. Anyone is very confused now? No, sir. It's clear. Thank you. No, huh? all cool, huh? Okay. So, all right. Before, you see, it's uh i already spent a lot of time explaining very in depth in uh indeed and we only spent about an hour so that's why i'm telling you there's a very potent very high potential that class might end early so this is what i'm talking about okay so yeah 